2023 CFL winter meetings one-on-one -on -one with Calgary Stampeders, not just head coach, general manager has been added to your title, Dave Dickinson. I'm curious, going back to the season, the decision to go with Jake Mayer and put Bo Levi Mitchell on the sideline, was that your first real move as a GM or was that strictly a coach move? <laughs> I think it's still a coach move. Um, I knew this was ball was rolling. To Huff and I had been talking about it for about a year, so I knew it was potential that it could happen. And also, you just don't get ahead of yourselves too far because in, in this world, as soon as you think you got the following year figured out, yeah, there's problems there. But that move, it was just one of those things. We were kind of in a rut, and uh, I felt like at the time uh, I needed a spark to see what could happen. And, and we ended up winning the game, and and ultimately that that's the way the season went. So it was a big decision, a tough decision. There was, you know, I had a lot of thought into it, but uh, it wasn't that it happened just at halftime. It had been kind of one of these things I was thinking about, but ultimately, you know, I did need to make sure I put the team first. And, um, you know, we, we were a team that was had a good season. We just didn't have a spectacular season. So we're looking to try to, uh, to make sure we can increase on, on the production, especially late in the year. What was that conversation like? with Bo, he's Bo? such a competitor. Well, it was a short week, so it was tough because um, we only had a five day week. We stayed out and uh, we went out to Guelph, uh, your alma mater, and uh, had like a one practice. And uh, I thought about it. I talked with the staff and I talked with Huff, of course, and I uh, felt like that was the move that I was gonna make for the following week. Not an AV conversation. I've got to give both Jake and Bo a, a tremendous amount of accolades for handling it. Like, uh, professional and a man and, and just doing putting the team above themselves and also being able to coexist and actually work together that's not going to happen very often and uh, you know Jake was in a tough spot because you know obviously uh, Bo still had a lot of uh, interaction in the locker room you know giving away game balls he still had guys ears Jake wants to be coming a little bit more into that leadership role and yet the other guy is right there Bo, on the other hand, is chomping at the bit to get back in every game. Hey, I want to get, you know, at, at what point am I going to get back in? So it was, it certainly was something that I, I, I did a lot of thinking about and, and uh, comfortable with my decision ultimately. And, and I got to live with it and, and move forward. Bo did get back in in the West semifinal. Looked pretty good. Did that give you even the slightest of pauses? Well, I mean, I know Bo can play. I mean, I know he's going to have a good year wherever he goes, and um, I, I'm, I'm happy that he played well. I think we were trying to win a game, and that's the most important thing. We're just trying to win games, and we're trying to take a step and get to the next week. And uh, uh, it is one of those situations. We kind of got into a, a, a deal with the salary cap, and Jake had some escalators in his contracts, and that was all through Huff. You know, I knew about them, but, you know, once we went past a certain stage, we did make a decision that probably this is going to be uh, uh, Jake's team moving forward. That didn't mean, though, that each week eh, I was going to put us and the team in the best situation to try to win. That was my job. And if it was with Bo or it was with Jake, I was going to try to manage those guys. And I knew I could because they're both honest professionals and competitive guys, but they understand if you treat them like a man, we can maybe disagree slightly, but we're going to keep working and try to put the team ahead of ourselves. Did you anticipate trading his rights in the off season? Well, once again, more on Huff's side. Um, it's happened. We've done it with Arbuckle. Uh, it happened with Mike Riley. Uh, it's a possibility. Um, didn't know if it would happen. Also, had to talk to Bo. You know, I want to make sure that you know. In my opinion. I wanted Bo to feel comfortable that what we were doing. You know, when I finished my days with BC, you know, I, I know Wally, he never really cut me. He, 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 I knew I was cut, but he never said those words, hey, uh, I'm, I'm cutting you. And so I, I feel like I've had some, some things that I liked and didn't like in my past playing career. And one thing I wanted to make sure is Bo understood we appreciated everything he had done. We, we wish him well and that uh, if he wanted to be part of our team, uh, we could find a role for him and the competitor he is and the talent he has and Bo, Bo wants to be the starter and he wants to be the guy and he's earned that and he should be that so once that was relayed back and forth it was best for our club to try to look for uh, an option to try to get something back for him. So was that something where teams were calling you or you were saying hey this is not calling me available? Um, 
you know, that's the thing about it is uh, a lot of this is just for me a little bit of hearsay because I wasn't there, but I know Huff has done this in the past, is excellent at it, and, and he, he definitely kept me in the loop, but it was more about, you know, this that was in his court and, and something he would probably be best to answer. In terms of Jake Mayer going forward in 2023, where do you see his potential and how can he build into that true franchise guy? He's got to, you know, keep improving. Um, you know, his, he'll have a bit of a more of a pulpit, meaning he'll be able to uh, take a little bit more leadership in the room. And, and uh, he's good at that. He's, he's going to he's a he puts the work in. He, he commits. He's also he's a tough guy that he's willing to pay the price. And so a lot of the things that I know he'll be successful at in that third thing, we got to surround him with good players. We got to keep finding what he's good at, and maybe what he's not as good at. And we got to make sure we adjust how we call a game and what we put in a game plan to help him. And ultimately, uh, we got to battle. Um, you can say what you want. Uh, we feel he's done enough to show he will be successful. But now, put it together for 18 games, put it together year after year. Those are all things Jake has to prove he can do. Now you're in that general manager's chair. Your re signing guys are making the decision not to re sign guys. You've had some offensive linemen re up. Julian Good Jones has just been released to go to the NFL. So there's a bit of in and out with players. What's that like? for you making the transition from head coach to now GM, and does that change your relationship with the players at all? Well, I've been involved in the process. I just haven't necessarily had to talk to that guy directly um, and maybe give him news that he doesn't want to hear. Um, I do think it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I have some guys that have done it. I, I was part of Wally's teams many, many years, and I've spoke with Wally about it. Wally, let's be honest, Wally loves the CFL, and. He's willing to, you know, be a mentor and a guy that I can lean on. And I have, you know, what I would consider my number one mentor in Huff, still in the building, still with me, still a, a resource, a guy that I know I can lean on. Uh, there will be challenges, no doubt about it. Uh, my thought is just be yourself, be honest. And then the other thing I said it, be human, meaning I understand that there's going to be emotions involved. And, and can we basically uh, come to an agreement that works for uh, both of us? Because if not, doesn't mean we can't be friends and we can't have respect for each other, but it's probably going to mean we're moving on. Was Reggie Bagels on the first re-signing that you had officially as GM? Uh, well, I really had, I wasn't officially the GM until the January. So Huff, yeah, he passed the torch and we did all that. But in theory, it's been a slow transition, meaning that uh, I still have, you know, who's signing this piece of paper, who's not, who's got their name on it. Um, so... One thing, we're not really concerned about it uh, because we try to work together. We're not saying who gets credit or who gets blame. We're just trying to do what's best for our team. Uh, I knew Reggie. That contract was done by Brendan Mahoney. That contract was done by our assistant general manager. And then, obviously, he gets parameters through Hoff, through myself, where we want it to go. But we have other good people doing a lot of the legwork. And I think that's important to note that uh, nothing's really changing with how we operate our system. It's just... I have now become a little bit more active in the off season. And yes, I do have a little bit more say if I want to step away from a contract, move in a different direction on a player, find a different avenue to try to make our team better. In terms of some of the veterans and guys that are pending free agents, I'll kind of go down a little bit of a list and ask you if they're going to go to free agency or not. Probably the top one, well, I mean, there might be some argument, but Cameron Judge was a leader for that defense. Do you envision him being back or testing the market? Well, that's why I'm probably going to be pretty generic with you because it's just not fair. Um, I will say one player's contract will affect another player. And so when you say, yeah, I want to bring him back, well, if he doesn't sign, then we have money for another guy. And it's hard to, like, tell guys, okay, you're, you're priority A or you're priority B. They don't want to hear that. We're all priorities. So for us, we've kind of had multiple meetings. We know who we're certainly uh, where we want to see if guys can fit. And if, if the player wants to be part of our team and gives us that assurance, like Zach did, Zach Williams, we sign that contract, and now the dominoes start to fall. So there are, certainly we've been in contact with guys, but we haven't been like full court pressing people. We're just, we, yeah, we want you back. Is there a deal to be made? If there is, great. If not, we know that things get done closer to the end of January when there's kind of more of a, a deadline, free agency starting. It's, it's so early. We didn't have any extra money in the cap. So it wasn't like we could sign guys in December and put it on 2022 cap. We didn't have any money. So the ball is just really starting to roll on all of our free agents. Ultimately, yeah, most of them we would like back. Whether or not we can get them, we'll see. 
you guys have done a great job over the years of developing from within and a lot of times going younger. It seemed like it was a little bit of an older team. I don't know the stats to back it up, so I could be talking about my butt, but do you want to get younger or do you feel like yeah. you're in a good spot? We think we're one of the youngest, except some of our best talent this year was from our older players. You know, uh, well, we signed Renee back. I mean, he's had one of his best years and he was our oldest player. Sean Lemon was up for Defensive Player of the Year. Again, one of our oldest players. So, um, you know, Derek Dennis, I think, had a good shot at, at the lineman of the year until he got hurt, one of our oldest players. So we have a young team, but we want those valuable pieces still in our building. And we still know that those veterans will help not only help us win games, but shape those younger players into the player they need to be. So age doesn't matter, it's about production. Well, you, you know, there's always that theory of, do you wait till they fall off the edge or do you try to maybe get out a year before that? And that's a that's a, a, a question, it's like, what came first, you know, the chicken or the egg? You don't know, you don't know the answer, it's by player. And I think, who's behind him? You know, is there a player that you think is a dang good player but just hasn't had an opportunity? And do we have that guy under contract? So just a bunch of dominoes that ultimately, it'll be fun, but in the next 30 days, yeah, a lot's gonna happen. Calgary used to be a team that you could pencil in, number one in the West. You're gonna host the West final, probably with a really good shot of going to the Great Cup. Winnipeg has overtaken that now, gone to three straight Great Cups, hosted a couple of West finals. Now, how do you get back to, I say this in a kind way, but being that ABC team, anybody but Calgary, where everybody in the league hates you because you're so darn good? Well, thanks, Cycle, and uh, credit to Winnipeg. Um, amazing run, and they, they've got a lot of their core still back. And, you know, it starts out with how, how good is your quarterback plan? And uh, ultimately, they've had the MVP the past uh, two seasons. Uh, I do think we've done an outstanding job. If you look at the 2018 Great Cup, which is our last win, you're not going to see hardly anybody on that field in a horse uh, wearing the Calgary Stampede or red. We've had at least... 90% or more on that team is gone. And that's not that long ago because we didn't play in 2020. So we've done a great job at, a lot of those guys necessarily are with other teams or have potentially retired. We've filled the gaps. We've got good players coming up. We, we feel like we're very competitive. We can beat anybody. There's no doubt about it. But we do want to see if we can take that next step and see if we can then uh, again, get back to the cup and try to win it. The one thing that you've done consistently and proven is that you can develop quarterbacks. It seems like some people out there at least feel like there's maybe not that high level of quarterback play across the league as there has been in the past when you were throwing the football or Jeff Garcia, Damon Allen, Doug Flutie, you could go on down that list of greats and maybe a generation past. What's the secret without helping out your competitors to what you've done in Calgary? Because it always seems like you have the next guy. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure, you know, where we, we feel like we've done a pretty good job. Um, you know, we do think a lot of the cores that played for us had their best years. You know, you look at Nick Arbuckle, you look at Kevin Glenn, uh, you know, guys that maybe didn't have a, a, as much success in other spots seem to have big years with us. Um, so we do, you know, I'm, I do feel like we've got a, a system that has quarterbacks coaching it. So maybe it's easier to have that vantage point. Still the toughest position to play in all the sports, I believe. Um, so, I mean, give me give me some other, it's, it's all on your shoulder, especially in Canada, and a lot of pressure. So it's not necessarily, you know, like necessarily that you have to have a guy that uh, is a world beater, but he has to be able to make some plays that are off schedule. He has to be able to do some things uh, that make him special. And it doesn't have to be physically all the time, it can be with your brain, but you're the, the teams that win are gonna have that quarterback that does something that maybe the other guys don't have and, and take that team from one level to the next. But how is that developed? Well, I mean... so unique with each guy? I think you do treat each person differently, yeah. And you've got to have plan time. You have to have practice time. You have to have good players around them. It's not like you can just throw a guy in any system. But the best, the number one way that you find a great head coach is you get a great quarterback. So, I mean, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to probably make sure that he wherever he played that he's going to make a very good head a guy look good as a head coach no. <laughs> there's not too many of them out there you know what i mean and we had one with bo bo was certainly uh i think made whoever was a head coach uh you know a lucky man but we have found the ways to, to stay competitive and win with other guys and we feel confident we can do that with jake in your opinion can nathan rourke make a great 
head coach in the NFL in your analogy? Well, is, I think he's still under contract, so I don't want to get in too much trouble. But I'm just going to say on record, I believe Nathan will get a chance down south. And just from the outside and talking, I think he's, I think he's going to stick. I think, you know, that kid's going to work. He's going to do whatever it takes. Uh, but been wrong many times, but I, I only know him just from playing against him and hearing stories. Uh, First hand when he played us this year uh, in the middle of the year there and uh, brought him back to beat us by one point. That was a very, very impressive performance. Uh, skill, talent. I would have to think he could hang with a lot of guys in the NFL. You've been there. That's part of the reason I wanted to ask. A long you time ago, though, now. Be, be careful there. Yeah. But I didn't need you. You did that, <laughs> to be fair. But what is something that you would give him as advice as a star CFL quarterback? going down in the NFL? Oh, I don't I don't have really advice from him. He's got better people than me to give him advice. He's, you can tell he's got people in his corner. He's, he's grounded. He's, here's what I think. He's a football first person, and that's going to be required because it's probably not all going to be smooth sailing, but you can tell it's very important to him, and he's got an inner confidence, inner belief. You know, his brother's a good player too. Their family obviously is, has raised some amazing people not only quarterbacks, and uh, you root for those guys. It's the same way I root for Alex Singleton every week because I love the guy, and he's just a football guy. He's a football nut. He wouldn't give up on the dream, and he's doing great. And those are, those are people that, as a, that maybe you cross paths with that have made an impact on your life, and you really want success for those type of people. And, you know, ultimately, meet, name somebody that doesn't have a lot of respect for Nathan. He's just really done a nice job. Well said, Dave. Thanks for sharing right. some time with us in the mountains. Appreciate Thank you. you.